And I said, honey, we have to start implementing this concept in our financial life. And it was at that time pace, February 2008, I was $984,711 in debt. That's what I owe debt what? party credit. Yep. How is this even possible? I teach people, Pace, how to build, keep, and create wealth through your own debts and expenses that you already have just by adding this one step in your financial life, which is... I am excited for this. This is the first of many Zooms that we're going to be doing with my new friend, Brent Kessler. I'm so excited to have you on here. I'm going to give you co-host so you can unmute yourself at any time. Thank you so much for letting me be late. We just closed a big, massive 160 unit multifamily purchase on seller finance with my investors. This is the first deal that I've ever done with a fund as my own fund. So it was a big deal for me to drive down to this asset, take a look at it. Thank you for letting me be late. Brent is a guy that continually gets brought up behind the scenes. I go talk to people who are doing infinite banking and I hear the word Brent Kessler. I then talk to another person that does infinite banking and I go, where did you learn this from? And they say, Brent Kessler. I then talk to another person and I say, where did you learn infinite banking? And they go, don't tell anybody, but I have this secret ninja guy that teaches me infinite banking. Everything I know, I go, let me guess, is his name Brent Kessler? And the answer is, of course, yes. So I decided to ask this very, very, very busy man who flies all over the country and does a lot of amazing things for a lot of people to come in here to our community and actually do a whole series with us on infinite banking. So anyway, welcome, welcome, Brent. I appreciate it. Tonight, we're going to do some softballs. We're going to do some first base hits. And I want to talk about tonight, what is infinite banking and why should anybody care about it? Hey, Pace, thanks for having me, man. I'm excited to be here. And yeah, I believe that 15,000 comments in the chat, I think you're probably getting close to that right now, right? And we haven't even started. So that is, that's cool. So yeah, man, I'm very grateful to be here and share with you and your community. Thanks for having me. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. How long have you been in the, in the insurance slash infinite banking world? Yeah, no, great question. Well, actually, Pace, back in 2006 is when I first heard about this concept. My background is as a chiropractor. I owned a chiropractic clinics in the Kansas City area. And I was at a chiropractic conference back in 2006. And I heard this speaker talk about the infinite banking concept. And I was like, man, that looks really, really good. It looks really cool, but it just seems too good to be true, right? I'm sure you've seen things like that where you've watched it and it looks too good to be true. Well, that was me. I was in that room in 2006. I saw the information and I thought there had to be a catch. So I left that conference. I did nothing. I went back to my normal chiropractic life. And then about two years later, Pace, I go back to another chiropractic conference. And the only difference between me and, and quite a few of the people that were at the previous conference is they heard the information two years earlier and they started applying this to their life. And I did not. So they were coming up to me, you know, about 10 or 12 of my colleagues were coming up. They were going on and on about this banking concept, how they were building and keeping and creating wealth all through their own debts and expenses that they already had. So they didn't have to change their cash flow. They didn't have to work any harder or take any additional risk at all. All they did was added one step in their financial life. So I thought to myself, if a 10 or 12 of my colleagues are basically uh, throwing up all over me on how this concept is working for them, there has to be something to it. There's no way the 10 or 12 are lying to me, possibly one or two, but not 10 or 12. So I came home and I told my wife, it was February of 2008. And I said, honey, we have to start implementing this concept in our financial life. And it was at that time pace, February 2008, I was $984,711 in debt. That's what I owe debt. What? Third party credit. Yep. Almost a million dollars in debt that I I want I want to hear this number one more time because it sounds like you've told this. I like this. Tell me that number one more time. It was 
$84,711, and it was February of 2008. And the reason I know that number is because that was part of the exercise. I had to go back and look at the debts that I owed other people. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, a guy from Kansas, how do you get to be almost a million dollars in debt? I know if you live in California, that buys a really small house, but in Kansas, it buys a lot, yeah? Yeah, that buys the whole state of Kansas, actually. <laughs> right. So I had my chiropractic school loans from chiropractic college. I had the house that I lived in. I also had a house on the Lake of the Ozarks where I'm coming to you from tonight between St. Louis and Kansas City. I spent a lot of my summer up here at the lake. And obviously, Pace, if a, you have a house on the lake, guess what you have to have? A boat and a wave runner, right? Of course. Yeah, man. You can't have a house on the lake without a boat and a wave runner. I'm also an airplane pilot. So as an airplane pilot, I have to have my own airplane. Well, it didn't take me a lot to become almost a million dollars in debt. I was able to, to just apply this concept to my life and I was able to pay that debt off in 39 months. Three years, three months, never had to change my cash flow, work any harder, take any additional risk or lose control. I just added this one step in my life and it drastically changed my financial life. Wow. And the step that you're talking about, I'm sure we'll ju jump into, but is this essentially what we're going to talk about is infinite banking? Exactly. So I started back in 2008, I started my first policy, my first infinite banking policy. As I said, it took me three and a half years. And then I became so passionate about this. I just started telling other people. And I learned a lot of the stuff that I teach through Nelson Nash. So the book here called Becoming Your Own Banker that a lot of people talk about, that book changed my financial life. The guy that wrote the book, R. Nelson Nash, he passed away in 2019 at age 87. So he's been gone now for, what, about four and a half years. That man taught me so much. And this book, Becoming Your Own Banker, completely changed my financial life. So now I get to live on his legacy and I get to teach this concept to thousands and thousands of people around the country. This is a different concept. It's an outside of the box concept. In other words, if if you go to your guy that does your retirement plans, your 401ks, your IRA, your guy from Charles Schwab, Edward Jones, T. Rowe Price, right? They don't understand how the concept works because it's not conventional teaching. It's not conventional things that we do. The Brent, thing you're you're gonna be you're gonna be really happy with our community because we do everything non-conventional in here. Yeah, we, we, we everything we do is creative finance, seller finance, subject to taking over, uh, you know, creating notes, all that kind of stuff. Yes. The people in here have already broken the box of the paradigm that they used to be stuck in. Everybody in here knows how to open up your mind, right? I was having a conversation with somebody today that didn't know the difference between subject to and seller finance in the real estate world. And he walks out and he goes, how is this even possible? And I go, it's so hard to show you that there are literally tens of thousands of people already doing this, yet you have never been introduced to it. So you, d you think it's something I just made it up five minutes ago. And I imagine infinite banking is very similar to that, that you tell somebody that's never heard of it, and they're like, how is this even possible? There's a great quote by a guy named Warren Buffett. And here's what Warren Buffett says. He says, if poor people would just start doing just what rich people do, they wouldn't be poor anymore. So that's <laughs> what, right? <laughs> so it's so simple. But if you think about it, I mean, the thing is, how many people are actually doing that, right? That's all we're doing with this concept, Pace, is that the tools that, okay, that the rich, that the wealthy have been using for over 200 years, because the concept, the infinite banking concept, how to become your own banker in your life, is not a brand new concept. It's been around for over 200 years. Like if you go research like how the wealthy build wealth, 
For example, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, the Morgans, the Stanleys, the Barclays. Go out and see how, for example, Walt Disney built Disneyland, how Ray Kroc started McDonald's, how Pampered Chef got started before Warren Buffett bought Pampered Chef. So the concept that we teach, the principles that we teach have been around for over 200 years. So it's not on trial. It's not being tested. All we're going to do is use those tools that they've been using. So we're not going to reinvent the wheel. All the stuff that I teach, I probably didn't invent any of that. I've just learned. I've just indulged myself in in this concept i eat live and breathe and drink this stuff to where i've just discovered the way to communicate it with people that makes it very simple and easy just to understand because i don't know about a lot of your community or you i have a hard time understanding complicated crap it took oh, me me, 13, me too it took me 13 trimesters to pass 10 trimesters of chiropractic college because I kept failing classes, right? So I am not the brightest candle on the cake, the sharpest tool in the shed, but I understand how to apply these principles and make them simple and easy to understand. And that's why I think that the community that I have, why people just like why they love me, because I make it easy. I make it easy to follow and I do not overcomplicate it because it doesn't have to be overcomplicated. Wow, man, I feel I feel like you're you and me are kindred spirits. Guys, is he not describing me with creative finance right now? Like I have broken the, the whole entire universe around creative finance. Everybody before me made it so complicated and they made it hard for people to get in. And now I've got 18 year olds and 22 year olds and 71 year olds and everybody in between doing like Jasper, Jasper's 25, just got a zero down sub two deal, took over somebody's mortgage. He is in Brooklyn. He says he doesn't drive. So this is so, this is like right up my alley. So I've got two main questions. Okay. Before, um, one question is going to take you a while to explain. The second question I'm going to ask first, okay? Okay. Somebody like me who has an IUL or a whole life insurance policy that I'm not happy with, can you help me if I already have an existing policy? Can you help adjust it, change it, move it over to you? How does that work? Absolutely. All of the above. And again, I saw a couple questions in the chat box come in. They said IUL question mark. That stands for Index Universal Life, right? That's an IUL policy. Now, the Index Universal Life policy is not a good policy for banking. You will have people out there that say, yeah, let's do the infinite banking. OK, just and the thing we're going to do is use an IUL. And if you go and you read all of what Nelson taught, he will tell you why you don't want to use an IUL. I'm going to give you the 20,000 foot view. The main thing is guarantee. See, Pace, in that IUL policy that you have, and I've never looked at your policy, in that policy that you have, if you look at the guaranteed side of the contract, that contract can go all the way down to zero. It can go to zero, okay, as you age, because the cost of insurance cannot keep up with the policy. And I've seen them happen. I've seen them decrease as you get older. So the IUL has no guarantee. So anytime you practice the infinite banking concept, the policy that you want to use is a whole life policy in a mutual company that pays dividends. That's the type of policy that you want. Okay, all right, so Brent. How many people have a whole life or an IUL policy right now? Give me a yes in the comments. Okay. How many of these people can convert theirs over to you or have you help them in, in whatever regard? Everybody? No, um, no, not everybody, but probably the majority of people. For example, let's say a person has a policy and they're no longer insurable and maybe they had a health challenge or something. So if that's the case, any policy you have, you better keep that one because you're not going to get another one because your insurance status changed. Now, the thing we can do with an IUL is we can do what we call a 1035 exchange and exchange that into a whole life policy. Now, it's okay. not 
just a one thing fit all. What we would have to do is look at your current policy to see exactly just what is going on and how that is designed. And then I'll give you my opinion of what we should do with it. Should you keep it and continue on? Should you cancel it? Should you 1035 exchange it? I'll give you the reason. And the thing I'll give you is just, okay, as far as just like the opinion of what I think should happen. And I'll give you the reason that I'm giving you that opinion. I'm not saying an IUL is bad. I would never buy one and I would never sell one. I can sell them, but I would never do it because see the IUL is the investment. The whole life policy is not an investment. People think a whole life is an investment, but it's not because the definition pace of an investment is what? Something that can go up and can go down. A whole life policy can never, ever, ever decrease in value. Never. It can only get better with time. It's guaranteed and it's in the policy contract. Okay. So that's the, that's the way to go. Okay. So that's my first question. Okay. My first question was, can anybody have you and your team review their policies? You switch over to you guys or open policies with you. We just gave you guys the information. Brent, you meet somebody off the side of the street and they say, what is infinite banking? How do you answer that question? Infinite banking is a concept that allows you to recapture all of the money that you're spending. Every dollar that you're spending, you can now keep that money in, in the family. So if a person asks me, tell me about your job, tell me what you do. I help people build, keep, and create wealth through their own debts and expenses they already have. So let me give you an example. Let's say you go buy a car. Now, I don't even know your community, but I know how they buy cars. They buy cars one of three ways. They pay cash for the car, they bank finance the car, or they lease the car. Because I know they didn't steal the car because they're honest. So the thing you have to do is buy the car. So the thing you have to do, Pace, is you have to take your money, you have to give it to the car dealer, the car dealer gives you the car. He gets the money, you get the car, transaction is over, everybody goes home happy, right? Well, by adding this principle, this concept, this process, this system in your life, you're now able to recapture and recycle that money. So guess what we just did, Pace? We just turned that car into an appreciating asset because what we do is we take every liability and turn it into an asset we take every asset that's depreciating and turn it into an appreciating asset as i said earlier the concept is not brand new it's been around for over 200 years there's a guy named robert kiyosaki he's famous for a book called rich dad poor dad he also wrote another book called second chance this is exactly what Robert Kiyosaki talks about in that book, Second Chance. Exactly what I teach. However, they make it so complicated to understand that you read right through it and don't really understand what's going on. Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins wrote a book called Money Master the Game. In chapter 5.4 of that book, go look it up. Chapter I, 5. I read it. I read that book and it's yeah. a phenomenal book. That guy put in so much work into that book. I just... What was funny is I read that, I was listening to that chapter on Audible. I, I had already been introduced to your name and it was actually that chapter that spiked me to go, I need to get Brent to come in and do a Zoom with us. Wow, that's cool. That, no, no, very cool. But yeah, chapter 5.4, okay? So in that book, it's what Tony Robbins teaches. So Pace, if I can show you how to get all the money back on every car you're gonna buy, drive and own for your family. So that means not only have the car, but get the money back, guess what else you can do that with? Anything, any product or service. You can do it with a TV, a piano, a boat, a wave runner, an airplane, a motorcycle. What about a house? What about your taxes? Can you get all the money back for all the taxes you pay, your state taxes, federal taxes, local taxes? What about charitable giving? Can you give to charity what? And get money back? Absolutely. I know that sounds crazy. You're thinking, oh my gosh, I gave a million dollars to charity last year. You recycle and get the money back and you're able to give more. Everything in your life. Like Pace, I do a lot of investing in real estate. I do a lot of lending of money. That's what I like to do. That's what I know. I know how to just to do that. I know how to loan money. All I do, 
All I do is I add this one step, and that step is what? You buy the whole life policy in the mutual company that pays dividends. Now, I want to be clear. This is not any whole life policy. No, no, no. This is not the policy that you can go buy from your brother-in-law that sells life insurance. We all have a brother-in-law that sells life insurance. This is not that policy. This is a specifically designed, specially engineered whole life policy in a mutual company that pays dividends, that has immediate high cash value. One more time, immediate high cash value. So that is the difference. It's in the policy design. Now, the reason the majority of, of uh, people that sell life insurance are not going to tell you about it, they don't really want you to buy this type of policy. And the reason, Pace, is because in order to design the policy this way, the agent has to take a 60% plus, okay, between 60 and 90% cut in their commission. And they're not willing to do it. They're not willing to take that hit in the commission to design the policy this way. So it's a high cash value policy, specifically de designed and specially engineered for cash value. And how soon can you use the cash value? Within 30 days. So when you put money into the policy, you can use it within 30 days. Now, hopefully, Pace, as we go through this series, I'm like you. I'm transparent with everybody, with everything I do in my financial life. You, you can ask me any question you want about my money and finances and where it is. And as far as how many policies I have, how much premium do I pay? Am I buying more and more policies all the time? And I'm happy to share that with you. And if you run the money through the policy, see, that's the whole idea. The whole idea is, okay, there's three rules. Number one, pay yourself first. Pay yourself first. Now, I know we've heard that before. That comes in one ear and out the other. See, I don't even know your community, and I know you don't pay yourself first. Here's what you do. Here's what you do. The thing you do is anytime that dollars come into your family. It could be active income, passive income, investment income. It could be a check in the mail from grandma for your birthday. You take that money and you put it into the conventional bank, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, U.S. Bank, wherever you have your bank account. And guess what you do with your money? You pay everybody else first. You pay the car people, the house people, the student loans, the food, travel, entertainment. You pay for Bobby's soccer practice, Susie's piano lessons, and hope there's money left over for you. You have to start Start paying yourself first. And the definition of paying yourself first is by putting your money into this policy. Do that first. And then number two, pay yourself with interest. Treat your money the same way you would treat a bank's money. So Pace, if you go to the bank to borrow money from to buy a house, to buy a car, you're going to pay them back with interest. You're not going to ask questions. You're not going to skip a beat. You're going to do it month after month. So when you borrow from yourself, pay yourself back with interest. Treat your money the same way you do a bank's money. If you don't, you're saying your money is not as valuable as the bank's money. And rule number three, recycle and recapture that money. Turn liabilities into assets. Turn depreciating assets into appreciating assets. Exactly just as Robert Kiyosaki talks about it just in his book, Second Chance. And Tony Robbins talks about it in his book, Money Master the Game. That's all we're doing. It's not complicated. Okay. Hey, all right. All right. Adding so one step, one step. That's it. One step. 